the Trump campaign over the past two days. He's outside the uh, Hilton Hotel uh, there in New York. Uh, Mark, what can you tell us? Well, like you say, the, the Trump uh, election night party is taking place in the Hilton Midtown Hotel. Um, it's going to be a much more low-key event than, than Hillary's party. Now, you might have thought that Donald Trump would perhaps want to have his party in Trump Tower, which is the, the, the nerve center of the Trump organization, and it's, it's just one block uh, to my left, in fact. But Donald Trump is not allowed to have his party in his own tower. This is because the, the Trump Tower is, is considered a, a privately owned public space so New York City will not allow him to have his party in his tower so he's having it in the Hilton now his party is an invitation only event and it's for friends and supporters of the Trump Pence campaign now most of the international press most of the media uh, they have not been included on that list of friends and supporters of the Trump Pence campaign which explains why 6th Avenue here is is lined with reporters um, now what can i tell you about the hilton hotel uh, there was one i read in one new york magazine uh, which sarcastically said that it had a solid three and a half star out of five rating on TripAdvisor. but i think that's the kind of sarcasm that probably explains in part why uh, the journalists are being left out in the cold as it were uh, the Hilton Hotel, it also uh, it has two claims to fame, perhaps. One is that the first ever mobile phone call was made from just outside the hotel. And another, uh, according to the Hilton Group, is that it's where John Lennon wrote Imagine. Okay, well, um, Mark, I mean, I can understand why you've been left out in the cold there from what we've seen from the... Trump campaign have not exactly uh, big, been a big fan of the uh, big, big fan of the media. But we, what we have to say, though, in this uh, this U.S. election, it's been really all about personalities. There hasn't been any kind of substantive uh, policy debate uh, since these two candidates uh, went uh, head to head against each other. Uh, why do you think that is? Well, that's true. There's, there's, been, there's been precious little policy, but plenty of personal attacks and, and insults in this campaign. But that plays to Trump's advantage. If you look at the backgrounds of the two main candidates, Trump is a businessman and he's a promoter. Clinton, she's trained as a lawyer, but she's really a career politician. Now, I think Donald Trump has probably recognized that he may not win, uh, against a seasoned legislator in a debate about the finer points of policy. So what Donald Trump has, has, has been doing is shifting the focus from policy to personality. And he's been very consistent in that strategy. Um, he, he doesn't really mention Hillary Clinton without calling her corrupt Hillary Clinton. He, it's something he does almost systematically on Twitter. It's not just Hillary Clinton, it's corrupt Hillary Clinton, corrupt Hillary Clinton. And it's something he did in the, in the Republican primary campaign with Ted Cruz. It wasn't just Ted Cruz. It was lying Ted Cruz, lying Ted Cruz. And I think Donald Trump perhaps subscribes to the belief that if you say something often enough, then people will start to believe it. And when the, the FBI came out with its uh, the threat, the menace of, uh, of an investigation into Clinton's emails, that was, that was like manna from heaven for the Trump campaign. Uh, and it went some way to, to reinforcing um, the point that he was trying to make in his message. What it also did is it put Clinton on the defensive. And uh, she wasn't able to, to stay on policy, which is somewhere where she would have been more at home and a lot more comfortable. And, Mark, as, as I say, uh, Donald Trump, he spent uh, his final uh, campaign... Uh, rally, rally, I should say, in Michigan. Now, that's uh, a state that's been uh, solidly uh, democratic, uh, going for the Democrats, I should say, for nearly two decades. Um, why do you think he decided to go to Michigan for his last rally? Yeah, Michigan's been a, it's been a, a late focus of this campaign. Both candidates 
have been in Michigan in the final hours and they've been sending surrogates uh, to also hammer across their message. Now, Michigan, it's one of these so-called Clinton firewall states, which also include the likes of Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, Virginia. Now, firewall states, what's a firewall? It's, it's a thick wall made of, of concrete that prevents the spread of fire. Now, in this case, the fire is the, the surge in Donald Trump's support. Now, these firewall states were considered by Clinton to be fairly safe for her. And initially, throughout the summer, she didn't really put any campaign resources into these states. Uh, there was very little money being spent on, on TV ads, for example. But Donald Trump, he needs to win one of these firewall states if mathematically he's to stand any chance of winning this election. So Donald Trump, he, he sends his blood in Michigan. He thinks he can win there. Um, so he's been campaigning hard there uh, to, 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 to breach this, this, this firewall. Now, Michigan, on paper, it's, um, it, it could be winnable for Donald Trump. It's a very blue-collar uh, state. Um, it's, its automobile industry has been suffering. Um, recently, Ford uh, took jobs from Michigan and put them in Mexico. Now, what Donald Trump was saying in Michigan yesterday was that he'll be putting a 35% tariff on, on companies that do just that, that take jobs from America and move them abroad. So Trump, uh, he, like I say, he sends blood. And Hillary Clinton, she lost to Bernie Sanders in the Democratic primary in Michigan. So it's, you can't really say that Michigan is, is hot for Clinton. And uh, so she's been putting resources into defending Michigan and also the other firewall states because it is looking like it could be one of the key uh, states in this election. Well, Mark, thanks very much uh, for that insight. We will be coming back to you within the next uh, couple of hours. Uh, we'll talk to you then. And, well, that's all for now. As I say, uh, we will be back uh, just after 9 p.m. Uh, Central European time. You can, of course, follow all the latest developments here on Euronews, but also on Euronews.com and our Facebook page. So uh, do uh, check that out. We'll uh, see you later, 9 o'clock Central European time.